Welcome to Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to New Mexicans by State Employees Credit Union, who have been proudly serving the families of New Mexico locally and abroad since 1958. State Employees Credit Union is ready to help you and your family with all your financial goals. And now, Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane. Get your kicks on Route 66. We've all, all heard about that. Perhaps some of you who are young maybe haven't. But back in the 50s and 60s, people did get their kicks on Route 66. We have a state senator who wants to make sure you get your kicks again on that route and all around New Mexico on Main Streets. We're going to discuss today the revitalization of Main Street, New Mexico with State Senator Sue wilson Befford as we discuss an upcoming town hall meeting regarding Route 66 and revitalizing the East Mountains and Main Street throughout the state of the New Mexico, and that will be on April 6th. So please stay with us as we discuss what is going on on Main Street. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for a more rewarding financial experience? Get local decisions on loans and accounts from people that live and work in your communities. Join State Employees Credit Union today and start getting rewarded. Thank you. Also get up to $250 cash when we refinance your auto loan. Stop by one of our offices, give us a call or go online and find out just how easy it is to make the switch to a locally owned and operated financial institution. Man, I love my credit union. Me too. Route 66, we loved, we loved to think about that road and what it means to our state. It goes all the way to California. And the high tide, I think, was in the, the 50s and 60s when people had their cars and they were driving through our state. And it was a really a booming time. Let's get back to that time. That's what my state senator, Sue wilson Beffer is saying. Isn't that true? We need to get back to making the state's Main Street revitalize, and I know that you've worked a lot this past year on that effort, uh, this past legislative session, and your interest in seeing that people leave the main drags and get back to Main Street. Yeah, there was even the song Route 66, if you'll recall. Some of us older people that remember what was uh, getting your, your kicks, kicks on, on Route 66. 66. But uh, what, what's been happening in New Mexico is the understanding that Santa Fe is not the only tourism area, and certainly uh, Albuquerque is wanting to capture more of that uh, uh, high-end tourism. Uh, but that's one market, which is the tourists that come in from out of state, but also people that live in New Mexico that may not have the money to, you know, fly around here and there, especially if they've gone from part-time to, or, or from full-time to part-time, or may not have the money to take their family to Disneyland or whatever. And what we now see is that we have so much uh, unexplored territory in New Mexico um, that you can take your, um, family and your kids and you can go see volcanoes you can go to all kinds of neat things throughout new mexico but we have to do our homework first because people will go to a, a really neat new uh, revitalized town if there's uh, there are neat places to go and and if and it is revitalized it, and if it looks that's what cool, you've been working and if on. there's affordable art if there are antique shops uh, some They'll of the go. places are talking about, you know, revitalizing their um, outdoor movies and and their bowling alleys and things that uh, used to be available for families, miniature golf and things, uh, bringing children into the process to help with the with the art in the town and and uh, in particular. So it's kind of a chicken before the egg type of thing. It is. We need to make sure these towns are revitalized. For people to go visit them, so yes. tell. Yeah, so you certainly you want to go, but you have to have some something to do once you get there, and you also have, a, have to have a neat little fun place to eat. And of course, the microbrewery is the big concept that I push this session. Uh, Let's talk about your district. You represent District 19, which is basically the east side of the mountains. Yes. Tell me the communities and parts, and, and in the counties, parts of Santa Fe, Torrance. Tell me, Sandoval, and, and so you know the main areas in the East Mountains. Uh, it's called a, uh, the Estancia Basin. And while I don't represent towns like actually a Mountain Air and uh, some of uh, you know Estancia and those towns, we're bringing all of those in. They all have wonderful mayors. They all have towns that want tourism. 
Uh, they don't want any of their shops closing. Mm -hmm. Some of them unfortunately have. And so we're really bringing uh, all of these groups into Harris, uh, Edgewood, Moriarty, uh, the main two uh, areas, and bringing the whole community in. We've actually formed a permanent uh, council that, that will be in place uh, far after this uh, town hall that we are doing, and we're going to have assignments and that sort of thing. To really um, get people back into these communities. And it along. does take money. So we uh, have brought the art and cultural uh, division in, and, and certainly the Main Street component uh, of economic development to really help with um, planning processes, looking for grants. Maybe so you're even, getting serious. We Let's are getting talk very about serious. how Edgewood, um, Moriarty, how they are today and what your vision is for them. And let's start with this town hall. It's going to be on April 6th, which is a Saturday from 10 to 12. It's called the Route, Route 66 Town Hall. It's going to be at the Edgewood Elementary School. Tell me, you've been uh, spearheading this effort for a long time. The purp what is the purpose of the town hall, and what do you hope to get out of it, and what are you, what's your vision five, ten years, or this summer <laughs> for the East Mountain area? And, and both uh, communities have, have wonderful people that live there with their parades, there are all kinds of neat things that they do uh, uh, with their population, wonderful places to raise uh, small children and families, they've got a great school system. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to regenerate some of the uh, old buildings. Uh, we are thinking about even bringing in a regional flea market that might be along the Route 66 highway, something like uh, if some of you know of the Dallas uh, First Monday flea market concept, it now spreads for miles and people What's from that? All, I'm not familiar with uh, that center. They, they, everybody knows that on the first Monday of the month in Dallas, Texas, they have in Canton, Texas, the first Monday, people come from all over and people that live there open up little pie uh, venues. They have uh, just unbelievable antiques. They clear out their uh, old barns, <laughs> uh, the starving sure. artist concepts. Uh, and it's now become uh, a real mecca for generating um, now that's what we have in Dallas and, what do we have today well right in now, Moriarty and in Estancia on the east side of the mountains what types of things are happening and what we hope comes out of this town and, hall and so as I mentioned we're hoping to really put together uh, uh, a regional flea market somewhere between Al um, Albuquerque somewhere uh, possibly out in the Edgewood area and then uh, the actual downtown of Moriarty uh, we want to really jazz up. We want to get the uh, medians looking bright and shiny. Uh, we want uh, murals painted on the buildings. We have a couple buildings that are right now vacant that we might want to put a, a little antique mall in there. We want starving artists to rent uh, the places. We have a wonderful theater that is part of Moriarty High School that we would like to really expand mm -hmm. access in terms of bringing in uh, plays and having uh, local groups present and Do musicals. You, would, and would you consider Madrid and Golden, Madrin on the east sides pretty successful at what they've done? Or is that what you're looking at, maybe well, Moriarty? Well, Madrid is really part of the turquoise trail and we think that people that would come in for these big flea markets and these downtown things in Moriarty would love to uh, take okay. uh, the road right up to Madrid and we would love to think that some of the groups that tour in Madrid would want to come down okay as opposed to stopping and turning around. So, That's uh, but, exciting. But uh, it, it's just a very invigorating uh, process that's going on, and it's been and amazing Moriarty, the, the buy-in from the mayors and, and the community leaders. At this, What's going to happen at the town hall meeting on April 6th? There has been a committee that has been uh, put together. Uh, last summer we put it together. And uh, they've been bringing in all of the ideas and the concepts and locating, uh, uh, locating uh, different uh, areas of, of financial assistance, uh, grant writing, and things of that nature. And what we're going to be doing is formalizing uh, the process at the town hall, educating uh, the community, asking for volunteers from the community, asking for uh, young people uh, to uh, uh, be become involved and really uh, then targeting some of the projects that we want to do in the first phase uh, to be able to really now make it become actuality. 
Very good. In actuality. Something that is actual is your brewery bill. Tell me a little bit. I mean, that is something that got passed. Now we're, you're hoping, hopeful the governor will sign it. Tell me what that the intention of that bill is for Moriarty, but also throughout the state. But let's sp speak specifically to Moriarty. Yeah, there's a wonderful uh, brewery in Moriarty. It's called Sierra Brewery. And we have microbreweries all over the state of New Mexico. I think there's some 36 of them. And what's, and what's a microbrewery? And they can be the auspices of people wanting to come and see and have a nice um, gourmet beer. Uh, have a sandwich and be able to enjoy the, uh, the community. So uh, the problem that we had with the industry is that the tax uh, came about at a very low threshold. So while uh, the lower amount of production made for very, very, very small mom and pop breweries, uh, it capped off uh, at um, 5,000 barrels. And so your bill just gave a and little so tax if, incentive in Colorado, to them too. In Colorado, they have an eight cent tax on all of their brewing. So, so it was a tax bill to help yes. this industry. Um, 36 microbreweries, I didn't realize we had so many. Most people don't, and they're all over the place. They're not just in Albuquerque. And, and what's a microbrewery? It's not like a Coors or a Michelob or, or I mean, a big yeah. manufacturing. Yeah. It's what's a mom and pop shop? It, yeah, what is in it? fact, it's a young person's new industry because uh, most of the people that own these things are very are in their 20s and 30s, and they have to buy very expensive equipment, uh, fermenters. Uh, you know, you sometimes see them down in Knob Hill, these big um, pieces of equipment, and they make their own beer. It's very expensive. Uh, that was the auspices of the reason that they can't really expand unless we change the tax law, because if the tax is too high, they just don't have right. the ability to be able to sell more, and it's very expensive. So to there be is able one to, in Moriarty. There is one, and they are they are just a, just a wonderful. A uh, little place that uh, really is a cornerstone that we think that tourists are going to want to stop. And of course, if you get into the Route 66 uh, travel adventure guide, uh, the, believe it or not, there are groups of motorcycle people that are, you know, older people that used to uh, travel through Route 66. There are caravans of RVs. Um, just all kinds of, you know, neat places that really want to stop all along Route 66. And we have to give them a reason to we do that do. again. They used to have a reason, but now we have to give it to them and, again. And uh, to discover the uh, wonderful jewels in these small communities. Like most people are not aware that uh, the soaring capital of the United States is right there in downtown Moriarty. I took a, t I took a soar myself. It was so exciting and so quiet and excuse me, uh, majestic, uh, that it, uh, people are going to want to go and, and uh, pay the money to go up on, on these soaring uh, tours. And, just and the soaring travel. is an uh, aircraft without an engine. Yeah. Uh, it's just, tell it's, me a little bit about it. A plane takes you up and cuts off the, yeah. cuts off the cord and you soar. Yeah, and so they have all kinds of conventions and these people come in from all over the United States and they... Uh, they want to travel around New Mexico and, and see uh, Estancia and all the nice places in Madrid and that sort of thing. So there are all kinds of, you know, wonderful little places for um, tourists to go. But we need to, number one, broadcast it and have a venue whereby we can, uh, y you know, broadcast it throughout the Southwest and really throughout the And you've helped with that, the, the uh, Tourism Department budget. You are the ranking member on the Senate Finance Committee and you help see to it that the tourism department w receive a little bit more funding from general fund tax dollars to help boost the idea that New Mexico was true, New Mexico was here, and the small towns are ready, ready for you to come visit. Tell me a little bit yeah, about and tourism. And so the Finance Committee over the years has been very uh, interested in expanding the tourism industry, not just in the big markets, but all throughout uh, New Mexico so that the tourists, you know, will know what's available and that they might have maps to show where to go. And we did a golf tourism program a couple years ago so that people might travel around and play golf throughout New Mexico. And so we have this wonderful new cabinet secretary, uh, Jacobson, and she's just doing a marvelous job. Uh, you'll recall where she did the Billy the Kid hunt a couple years ago to pe get people to travel around and get the clues. I think they take pictures. Of yeah, it, photos. just wonderful things. So tell me a little bit about how this is going to help 
Main Street programs and how it's going to help the rural areas in New Mexico? Well, what we're hoping is that some of this new money going into her department will be to really broadcast these little small markets up in Chama and and all of our beautiful mountains and the railroad and all the little places that people can go outside of Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Uh, they may light here and, and uh, enjoy the beautiful gourmet restaurants and the art, but then they might want to take a day or two and travel out here and come back and travel out here and there and so on. And really, uh, one of the important things about New Mexico is we want to maintain the integrity of rural New Mexico. If we don't have jobs out there, if we don't have income coming in and gross receipts coming in, obviously the little towns dry up and people have to go into the larger communities to get jobs and then you have schools that can close and you know just different things that we really don't want uh, to happen in our state. And by the way, it, it can happen in, in big states where uh, the leaders don't pay attention. What is happening on the east side mountains? We have this Edgewood Elementary School, we have a high school, we have charter schools. How vital, how revitalized is the out east side of mountains at this point? Oh, well, our East Mountain Charter High School is one of the best, not just in the state, but they're nationally ranked in all kinds of things, such as debate So teams the community is still growing oh, on the east side? Just, uh, just it's, well, who wouldn't want to live in a beautiful area <laughs> where you have the mountains and the ski ranges and beautiful clean air and nice, friendly people? and people that care about families. A lot of people are looking now more into rural areas to raise their families because of crime issues and what they're hoping is gonna be a better education for their families, um, outdoor extracurricular activities. We're, we're about to have an Easter egg uh, roll um, and just thousands of little children go out to the ball field and go out with the Easter eggs. And, you know, you don't get a lot of that uh, type of activity in the um, inner city. So you're helping with the tourism dollars. Also, you wanted to discuss, Senator, um, the Main Street program, but also the Route 66 program. I'm not too familiar with, with that, the grant program for the Route 66. Yeah, well, uh, as I said, there is a, a very organized group of people that travel along Highway 40, Route 66, from east to west, and they like to stop in. They like to go into uh, all the old-fashioned little uh, places and have sodas. But there's and grant. But there's grant money available. There is. Oh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, we're we're learning more about it. There are people that are in charge of uh, you know these di different divisions in states that can locate uh, grants and also to be able to show what other communities have done and bring experts mm -hmm. in to help. In fact, we we have been uh, working with Mayor Barry. He's doing a lot of neon work. Uh, to promote the east and the west side of Route 66 where you have the old neon lights that mm -hmm. sparkle up and we did some capital out, uh, outlay money uh, for the east and the west side of, of Route 66 on each side of Albuquerque. And so we're going to be putting uh, Route 66 signs all along to show things that they can stop and do. We have this wonderful Wild Wild West Park that most people have never heard about in the East Mountains. And Tell me about it's that. for families and little children that can go see wild animals uh, and uh, you know learn about them. It's very educational. They have barbecues and covered wagon barbecues and things they put on shows out there. And it's just a wonderful venue mm. for, for families. There's a wonderful pumpkin patch out there where every year- I've heard of that in Moriarty, yeah. yes, I've heard <laughs> about that. Take the kids out there and- uh, it's just uh, it's just a wonderful place for families, and it's also a place uh, that has a lot of culture, and uh, a lot of people are not aware of uh, of the ruins, the Anasazi ruins that are off of Route 66. The um, so the program is the Route 66 funding program. There's a number of grants, but also there was funding put into the Main Street program, which is Main Street USA, but we have Main Street New Mexico. This is a national program that helps revitalize Main Streets and small communities. And what's interesting to me is, I guess through some kind of funding mechanism or for some granting, that these are private businesses, but tax dollars can go into revitalizing them. Tell me a little bit about well, that. Well, and we also put state funding into Main Street. Uh, we have... Uh, but again, it's, it's the question of public money going into a private business. 
How does that work? Well, it's actually, uh, it doesn't directly go into the private business. It goes into the government agencies uh, that learn how to get their streets more attractive. That uh, one thing that we, we are also working on is the architectural interns to help with getting median uh, help so that you don't have to have expensive architects that you really, you know, really can't go out to little towns of 5,000 people and that sort of thing. So I'm working with the architectural school on that as well. Tell me a little bit more about the Main Street program and specifically what's going on with more. What other communities do you have? Edgewood, Moriarty, what other ones on the east well, side? Well, uh, and of course the little small community of Tejeras. Really, those are the main areas. And then, mm -hmm. then we have uh, Cedar uh, Crest, which is on the way to the ski range. But uh, I, I'm not just working uh, on Main Street for my own district. The it's Rural right. Economic Development Committee in the interim has a, a keen interest on this. So there are all kinds of little main streets in northern New Mexico, northern New Mexico, down in Silver City. Uh, they have a wonderful art festival down there. And, and so uh, they really have done a beautiful job of uh, attracting artisans and promoting it and getting people to come on certain days and, and communities. And then, by the way, they stay in your hotels and things of that nature. So. Uh, really, I think that New Mexico is really a, a hidden, uh, beautiful diamond that is just now being developed. Thanks to, a lot to your efforts and your attention to this because you do live now. You used to live closer in Albuquerque. Now you live in the East Mountains and you see these, these, these towns that need to be revitalized. My, my efforts and other legislators that champion their own districts. Um, and yes, we had Senator Pat Woods. He was called Frontier, what was his, Frontier? Yeah, yeah, Frontier Main Street. So I think his bill passed and is probably going to yeah. get signed or it may have already gotten and signed. And his idea is they're called is Main Street, but a Frontier Main Street. Same idea? Well, yes, and what that is is even a smaller community. Oh, even than, smaller, yeah, okay. Under 5,000 people. <gasps> There'd be funding for that. Yeah. And there was money put into the Main Street. Can you give me some examples of what happened in the past? Uh, you've been a senator 16 years, but with this main, I know you've been involved with the Main Street program. Give me some examples of what they were able to do. Well, to I mentioned up. Silver City, which really uh, you really tout as having done the finest job because they now have a whole art community down there. They've spruced up their hotel and different things. And so really, uh, I've only been very active in this movement just since my new district came about uh, this last uh, re-election because we uh, all got our new districts and for the first time I have the entire East Mountain uh, area of Edgewood and Moriarty as opposed to just segments of it. And so it really does bond the two communities together uh, to be able to really bring the state reps together and, and all of us help and uh, it's just been a very exciting new, Who's, new idea. Uh, who are, new idea, and we, we are hearing about it first here on Issues and Answers. The town hall again is on Saturday, April 6th, 10 to noon. You're going to be speaking there. A uh, number it's of open to the public. There'll be uh, all kinds of other people that will be speaking. And really, I've had the, the two mayors, uh, Mayor Hart and Mayor Brad Hill, uh, take the lead on this. It's their community. It's their destiny. They ultimately are the ones, um, you know, that are going to be the principal leaders of this effort. And they're going to be discussing, are they looking for ideas or are they looking to just excite everybody about revitalizing? Well, both. They've been meeting on a monthly basis with this core uh, committee and they've uh, developed all kinds of cool ideas and now they're going to be bringing, bringing them to the public to uh, expose them and, and to make sure that the public has buy-in and wants these types of ac activities. Can and you give, you gave us a hint on the flea market, but any other ideas that you hear might be discussed for the East Mountains? Yeah, well, I also uh, touched on the theater that uh, our, our uh, capital outlay money paid for in Moriarty. It's attached to the high school. And uh, we want to make better use of that theater so that we really can start uh, promoting it throughout the Southwest and have shows and have traveling uh, uh -huh. groups of plays and maybe ballets and country western and uh, you know who knows what we might be able to do and it's certainly to encourage young people 
to put on activities and dances and things. Okay. And it'll be a revenue uh, you generator for us. Anything else? We've got a couple of minutes left. That you, I, when you mentioned theaters, I was thinking of the drive. I, is anybody going to bring back a drive-in movie? There theater? is discussion of drive-in theaters because a lot of people miss that and also it's kind of a Route 66 neat thing uh, but um, people that uh, live in these small towns and tourists want to have things to do in the daytime and after work and on weekends so that they don't have to drive in uh, to the larger cities for, for their amusement. We're hoping that some uh, little uh, miniature golf places can come out. Uh, there's, uh, there's a really a neat antique car uh, the display and company out there that we think we can uh, really uh, bring in more um, of those um, types of cars and old tractor parts and uh, a lot of people notice on television where they they have these traveling buyers that go into these small towns and they go into uh, the barns and different places and buy that there is a lot of interest in that in that type of sale uh, who knows uh, about the antique treasures that we have in the East Mountains of people that uh, you know, they can make extra money, they can uh, start um, you know, trading and buying more and bringing How people in and advertising. And, and you don't have that in the big city, do you, Senator? No, we, we certainly are looking forward to reasons why people might want to go and buy uh, real art um, from starving artists that may not be um, of the expense that some of the big markets have. And so uh, for me personally, I would rather buy uh, a piece of uh, beautiful art from an original artist uh, and have it signed and meet the artist and so on, as opposed to go into a store and buy, you know, a couch um, well, yeah, piece of a art. A little different experience <laughs> in life in the East Mountains and in rural New Mexico. A little different experience, and you want to make sure when people go, they're excited about it. Again, I'm going to promote, you're going to be speaking with a number of other people with this town hall meeting, the Route 66 Town Hall, April 6th, Edgewood Elementary School. Thank you so much for your efforts, Senator. Oh, well, thank you for allowing me to cause awareness to this because we are very excited about it. And very good. Who knows what the East Mountains is going to be? We'll find out soon. Thanks for watching the program. Make it a great week with your family and go make it to uh, rural New Mexico and Main Street. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for a more rewarding financial experience? Get local decisions on loans and accounts from people that live and work in your communities. Join State Employees Credit Union today and start getting rewarded. Thank you. Also get up to $250 cash when we refinance your auto loan. Stop by one of our offices, give us a call or go online and find out just how easy it is to make the switch to a locally owned and operated financial institution. Man, I love my credit union. Me too. Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater is presented as a public service to New Mexicans by State Employees Credit Union, who have been proudly serving the families in New Mexico locally and abroad since 1958. State Employees Credit Union is ready to help you and your family with all your financial goals and is the exclusive sponsor of Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater in order to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. To comment on today's program or to purchase a DVD copy of any Issues and Answers program, visit sunbroadcasting.cc or call us at 505-345-1991.